Welcome back to Droolish Episode 3. I am your host, Joey Mondado. For those of you still unfamiliar with the show, well, this show's more about me chatting for an hour, a couple hours, maybe more, maybe less, about random things. Sometimes it's going to be stories, sometimes it's going to be rants, sometimes I might want to have some Q&A. Uh, there might be some other things I feel like doing, but overall, I want to keep this show entertaining, but not too entertaining, uh, because my goal is to help you go to sleep, and I find that my voice is rather soothing at times, and people tend to yawn and get tired uh, when I speak for a long time. Being a guy who is long-winded, uh, that tends to make a lot of people bored, and oddly enough, that is something that I've noticed for me uh, in falling asleep. So I'm pretty sure by now this is going to be the type of podcast it's going to be. So if you're already bored and tired of me already, well, keep on listening because you might catch yourself uh, catching some Z's. I want to start out by saying thanks again for listening. I don't know who's listening or who would listen. Uh, this podcast is still in its testing period, and I hope to improve the show over time and to improve my overall ability to be a good host and to be entertaining. So I wanted to start creating a segment called uh, Ask Droolish. So, you know, on Twitter or on Facebook or wherever social media, uh, I'm going to say Twitter for now, just type in hashtag Ask Droolish and ask us a question about anything. It doesn't really matter. I'm just more than happy to do some Q&A. Uh, I feel like that type of dynamic of me having subjects to talk about on the spot keeps my mind sharp and it prevents me from like losing focus. So yeah, hashtag ask droolish and ask away. I'm pretty sure by the time you get to about episode eight of this podcast, uh, I will probably start, you'll probably start getting more of these uh, answers to the uh, Ask Droolish hashtag. So c- keep that in mind. Uh, I am wanting to create a lot of material and have these more batched out in seasons, uh, at least starting out. So yeah, after about five or six episodes, I plan to uh, change a few things based off of you know uh, feedback and keep going from there. Uh, like I said, I want to do better, and I want you guys to have a better listening experience so we all win. So I was looking online the other day at some photos, and I was pretty surprised at the quality of the photos. And my first thought was, how do these photographers get so great quality photos like how do they you know how do they master the craft so well and how are you able to comprehend that visually because you know outside of a photo we really don't see certain things as well as images and that got me to think you know uh, uh, for us humans you know what you know what is our vision you know if if our human eyes were camera lenses what would uh, what would our camera lens eyes be in millimeters? And I think that's the standard size they use uh, for photographers. So uh, I looked online, and uh, one of the results that talked pretty in depth about it uh, was I think it was from a DP review, Digital Photography Review dot com, and it's a pretty simple discussion created back in '09. But uh, the guy, you know, new to photography, his name goes by Click. Uh, he asked me uh, what what millimeter what millimeter normal view is uh, because all of these cameras and websites have different uh, lenses between like 18 and like 300 millimeters. So he was wondering if there was a a camera lens that matched the human eye. And everyone that apparently chimes in doesn't really know um, verbatim. They say it's about 50 millimeters give or take, uh, but the biggest caveat is like our eyes work differently than a camera and you can't really do like a one-by-one comparison. So 
Um, it says this guy too, his name goes by Gideon W. He says, uh, note that this 50 millimeter uh, corresponds to 35 millimeter film or full frame formats. Most DSLR, most DSLRs have a smaller sensor and therefore need a different focal length for normal view. Okay, so that, okay, so depending on the cameras too, that 50 millimeters like adjusted towards a different lens. Okay, that's what I'm getting. Um, and then as I'm scrolling down, see David Gleason, regular member, he goes, uh, to, he says the 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens is widely considered normal, uh, mainly due to the, mainly due to it being the approximate, uh, length of our human field of view or something. And then he says, if we're talking about how much we can actually focus on one time about including things in our peripheral vision, it is probably pretty close. Some people feel that 35 millimeter focal length offers a more natural feeling view. Um, since we do have peripheral peripheral vision, while we while we can't focus on what's there, we still register it in some way. So, I guess more or less, the thing that uh, gets me is there seems to just be like there's not really one dynamic of an actual millimeter lens that's super reactive of that, that that actually matches a human eye. So I also had like a lengthy segment planned out and I had a few segments planned out too. And then around like the six minute mark, I realized I kind of got sick of following like an agenda. I still haven't really figured out like I wanted, like what I wanted to talk about. And I know I'm trying to get better at just talking, probably even being more concise. But uh, I listened to myself for the first like six minutes prior because I, I cut off the podcast and listened to myself before re restarting. And I still find myself mildly entertaining in the sense of I just love listening to myself talk. So, yeah, I don't know why I'm including it in this podcast, but I just noticed that if I am just talking more off the cuff, I don't tend to ramble on, but if you happen to notice me ramble on, then you obviously know I am not interested in the subject, so therefore you should be at least semi-interested in what I'm talking about if I'm not rambling. That said, I'm just going to start going down a list of YouTubers that I am currently subscribed to on my uh, personal YouTube channel, because why not? And I'm going to see if I can in, in, try to include some music in the background as well. So mark it right here. Uh, the time I'm creating this podcast, 2 o'clock, June 4th. I am going to put a little bit more effort into adding sound and possibly even up to uploading my first couple of podcasts on YouTube too as well. So I know it sounds ridiculous because... If you're listening, obviously the podcast is already up and you probably would have noticed if you listened to the first two episodes is that I used to refer to the to the old podcast as The Yawn before I changed it to Droolish. But I digress. Going down my list of YouTube subscribers, which is interesting because I've had this YouTube account for, holy cow, like, I don't want to say 20 years, but since the dawn of YouTube, I guess, before they integrated Google Plus or, yeah, but Google Plus into YouTube and before my YouTube actually is connected to a name, like my actual name and not a username. Yeah, they changed that, but, uh, but yeah, I still have the OG account. Um, so which is pretty cool. And I can probably ramble on about a couple of YouTube accounts I used to have at one point and something else. Um, so, uh, future Joey, just remember, talk about that, but current Joey, let's press on. YouTube subscription. So uh, the guy who I'm thinking about subscribing to right now, he goes by the name of Ohara, O-H-A-R-A. And he is just a YouTuber that uh, he talks more about like anime stuff, specifically One Piece, which for me is pretty cool because I'm a awesome like lover of One Piece, a phrasing, terrible. Yeah, you know, I, but I love the uh, One Piece uh, manga and I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep pace with the anime, anime dub 
uh, sub lovers, whatever, you know, don't bash me. I, I, I watch up to the sub too, but, uh, my wife and I just like enjoying the dub together and Funimation has been terrible, terrible at getting the dubs out. So regardless, uh, this O'Hara guy, he just talks mainly about One Piece content, and I was considering creating a YouTube channel as well. Outside of uh, Droolish, you know, thinking more about creating a YouTube channel that talks more about video essays, that's a little bit more polished, a uh, little bit more polished than probably this podcast as well, but we'll see. Uh, and, uh, you know, he has some interesting stuff, talks about character analysis. Uh, he's not the most polished guy out there, but I enjoy his content. He's easy to listen to. And, I don't know, if I enjoy listening to him in the background, I'm, just, I'm assuming he has a style that's similar to what you guys would probably enjoy, which is something that's soothing in the background, just like this. So yeah, the first up on my uh, subscription list, I think YouTube actually has it set up in a way where it goes by live streams first. So it's a guy named, named Ambition. So if I recall, he is the... Uh, live streamer that does like the chill hop lo-fi radio oh yeah so he's got some uh, lo-fi hip-hop radio going on uh i think some of this uh, i'll play some in the background i'll play a few songs for the next few minutes for some chill hop so uh you know i'll put that you know play it now boom uh, it's got to be royalty free i'm telling myself this right now as i replay it so i know i'm not going to get dinged on youtube or whatever um and i don't i don't know how to claim all that whatever uh copyrights probably takes like a couple weeks i don't have time for that okay i do i'm just too lazy uh, maybe when i invest more effort in the show well i'll uh get on that but in the meantime still want to ramble on uh this ambition guy he he just plays like a lot of the lo-fi hip-hop radio which you're listening to right now and this is pretty good. I used to listen to this a lot when I uh, worked at a previous company. I played this in the background with some uh, rain as well. And I might include some rain on top of it on uh, right now in this podcast to help you actually get a little bit extra sleepy. Ready? Three, two, see? See what I did? I already did it before then. Uh, I didn't want you into spitting anything to keep you, you know, on the edge. So enjoy that rain and some low high for the next few minutes um, but yeah the mission's pretty cool I uh, just click his main link he's always live 24 7 uh, I think you can link to his Spotify too he's got Twitter you can follow him I also have the chat on, on uh, YouTube as well which for me as someone who I know I do a lot of marketing and whatnot but I'm usually on the back end of it and I haven't really hopped on YouTube too much especially in the live streams I'm more of a twitch guy uh, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. The uh, the stream quality for YouTube is probably better than Twitch, especially with the features. But uh, what still I'm just not a fan of is just uh, if I want to chat, I'm still using my name. I mean, I could switch accounts, but I don't know. I, want, I don't have. I do not want to have too many accounts and like in my YouTube associated with my name. I don't know. I'm just paranoid like that. What happened to the good old days of just user usernames? Remember, remember usernames? Those were those are great. Anyway, moving down my list. So he was actually the only live stream. I don't actually have any other live streamers, but I have I think s about 24 subscriptions, and this is gonna be a fun one. I'm actually gonna go through all these subscriptions over the next 45 minutes and tell you who they are and whether or not I should watch them or uh, stay subscribed to them. So first one on the list is Von Allen Sports, which I think he is my most uh, recent subscription, so I'm definitely not going to unsubscribe to him. Uh, what I love about him is he's got a series called, uh, I think it's the, the Brady Hate series, the Brady Hate Saga, and he pretty much talks about why, how Tom Brady is Pretty amazing, uh, even compared to how the media perceives him. What backs up with videos, stats, uh, a lot of the things that I would actually would have, would like to be doing more, and YouTube content as well. So, uh, if you notice, the people who I am 
describing to you more these more more or less these days are people that I really really admire their work and I love the content that that they're doing and, and that are inspire me, inspiring me to create content like this. Uh, you know, despite this being kind of a boring podcast, which is the point, but uh, but you know, I'm hoping I I'm hoping I'm doing the job, and if not, and you're still awake, well then I guess you can use this as a daytime podcast. But in the meantime, I'm still gonna be the uh, the sleepy guy, so that ain't gonna change. Number two on my list out on the uh, videos, excluding live stream. That's great. I'll just go to I'll just say number three. So number three, number three subscription. Uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf. He is another recent guy I subscribed to. Uh, took me a while just to subscribe to him, actually. I was pretty interested in his first video that he, uh, well, that I became interested in him, which was, was terrible English. I'm still keeping it, though. I first became interested in Super Eye Patch Wolf as a YouTuber once his, the, uh, the Follow Simpsons video uh, video was created and it was a pretty interesting like mini documentary he just goes over his thoughts about I believe like the peaks peak Simpsons era and like kind of when the writers left the show quality started going down and all that fun jazz I highly recommend it and subscribe to him he's got a lot of good material I just one day I'll eventually catch up to his, to his stuff uh, another guy who I recently followed number four on my list urinating tree which I honestly don't know why I subscribe to him I know he's a recent one so I, I do not want to get rid of him uh, but he's only had a few videos which I liked which was like his haters guide videos but even then that was only good like background noise I wasn't paying attention but most of his subjects are um, heavy sports related uh, talk about like NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Honestly, I, I probably should just keep keep him around, mainly because I just don't have any time to pay attention to sports these days. I really need to. I should probably play a sports podcast while I'm talking. But uh, I have not been paying attention to the NBA, uh, MLB, NFL is the only thing I pay attention to, and even then it's only the Lions. And they, they ain't looking too good this year. Not kidding. They're, they're going to be good. They're always going to be good. They're going to be 16 and 0. No way they're not going to be a 16 and 0 team. Number five on my list. It's called Holic. I'm clicking their page now, and I believe they are a wrestling specific type of uh, YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I think they have like a variety of like listicles. Uh, like 10 things you didn't know they have rankings as well like one of them i believe i watched was i think ranking every ranking every wrestlemania from uh, worst to first or something like that uh, even though they're more of a listicle type of like channel on the scrollings uh i don't know the the way they view their content like they put out the content in a in an interesting manner that's not just a generic company i mean it is from a company i believe it's a company it's, it's a media company that owns it but like it's a it's a pretty entertaining one that actually does it better than i don't know more the other ones that te that that seem forced i can't really explain it i wish i could talk in video form and show you but i can't oh my god so here's a note for anyone that's listening and probably to myself once I go back and edit probably the stupid parts that I'm regretting even talking about. But I need to create like a highlight reel. And not really a highlight reel, but if I have like a rant that's, that's like one or two minutes, maybe just like make that a highlight portion and put some video editing in in the background um, and upload it on YouTube. And maybe that'll get more people aware as well. Because uh, I know I'm going to be uploading these videos on YouTube, but they're not, you know, it's only going to be a photo of freaking a thumbnail that might grab someone's attention. Maybe it won't even be that way. I don't want to get people's attention. Uh, well, I kind of want to do for my first video, but uh, outside of that, I just don't, 
I don't know. The whole point of YouTube is to get attention that helps people and getting it getting attention and and not living up to expectations is something that I don't like doing at all. Number I think six. I have Gary V. And it has been a long time since I've actually added or subscribed to people on YouTube. Because I've added Gary V when I was like 30, 30 years old. Which is three and a half years ago. So, yeah, only six subscriptions in the last three and a half years. Back when Gary V, I think, only had like 50,000 subscribers. And now he's at 2.1 mi million? Jeez, you're a beast, dude. Uh, I do respect how often he uh, tests. He does so many tests. So many, like, split tests, A-B tests, and all social media platforms. He's got his guys who are just doing things that, I mean, they're spending half their time doing things that aren't even practical or conventional, which is pretty cool, honestly. Uh, honestly, initially I was going to talk about him, kind of hating on him, because uh, he, he, he's a love-hate kind of guy for me. Like, I love I love his messaging for the most part. You know, I love his overall positivity. Um, but, I don't know, it's... Um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to relate to someone like him these days when he's this big now, uh, compared to more of his stuff when he had more time to be genuine. Uh, I'm not saying he isn't genuine now, uh, but I don't know, like. Like I mean, technically, I could run my own company on a phone if I just paid someone to manage the company and I gave him a salary, and I sell the work on a phone. Like that's. I mean, technically I, I, technically, I know people that do that right now. And I could do that if I just gave all my work to my buddy. Like, it's not, it's not unheard of. But, uh, you know. But overall, love the guy. Um, and that's kind of one side rant I want to mention, too, right now. Like, it shouldn't be... Like, I don't know why people get up in arms about... If you say one bad thing about... Like, like a, an entertainer or someone that's in the public eye. That's the key, public eye. Like, someone that's going out of their way. Like, that person knows kind of, like, they're expecting criticism. And people, I don't know, for Gary Vee especially, whenever people criticize Gary Vee, and I'm actually pretty critical of him and his, uh, when he talks about employment and whatnot, like, you know, if you read his glass door stuff and everything else, and... You know, his, his reasoning or, or something like that was something along the lines of, you know, that, you know, they were upset at the time and they wrote it and they're bad apple, you know, bad apples or whatever. And, you know, those are the same excuses I heard, I hear terrible company, like terrible managers use, um, like retail stores or other places that have high turnover rates, especially in, and I've seen it in like, like I said, bad managed companies that were that where the manager just never acknowledges that hey it's it, on the off chance that hundreds of employ hundreds of employees they're the wrong ones like that doesn't add up based off one or two or three different things and um, you know p these people write reviews in Glassdoor and give them get, you know give gives us their perspectives which is a very more realistic approach and and you know it's fine if you know Gary's adjusted and made those changes that is completely you know, he, he believes in that, and that's, that's on him, you know, it's, you know, and that's fine, um, but, uh, I, I don't know, it's just, I, I like to look at both perspectives, and both sides, before, or, or at least questioning one side before the other, and again, that's just only one, one criticism, and, and going back to my initial point, it's like, it just seems so insane that even just having one criticism of a person, uh, despite being, you know, he's a positive person, like, everyone just seems like it's, us versus them like it just seems weird that like, people are human and they're flawed it doesn't you know that's what makes people interesting like the flawed parts more or less are the parts that make us weird are the parts that i don't know are more or less like you know pretty quirky things that i think most people kind of define themselves as or, or define themselves as or it's a character trait but for me, I know I ramble on a lot. I know I'm long-winded. I also know I have ADHD. I, I know I'm just like kind of get super paranoid at times. Um, but 
you know, it's just, I don't know. Okay, no more, no more side rants. I know that last one was like five minutes, and I do tend to go on a lot. That said, numbers, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven, I have a guy named Roberto Blake. So I added him years back, and he was a guy I added back at the time knowing that uh, his content more or less is okay. Like, he would probably, like, I don't know. I don't want to say he's terrible at content, but, you know, I would say it's, it's, it's okay. That's it. Um, but he's, okay, I, I don't want to say that all the way. I need to watch one video. So I'm going to turn on one of his newer videos that he's created. Let's see. Over, well, I'm going to look at the last few videos. These YouTube channels are doomed. He's got a crazy thumbnail, words, an emoji in it too. Um, but most of his videos aren't like, most of his videos only get like between five and 10,000. So that's the thing. He just, I don't know if he just creates so much content and more of it's all informational. I think he's just more of like a pure informational channel about YouTube. Uh, and I think he uh, does have, I think, you know, a lot of like inherent knowledge of uh, doing like the, the right things foundationally. And I think I've seen him do like speaking arrangements too. Uh, so I don't know. He's, you know, I don't think he does anything super like, you know, game changing. You know, he's just the guy who creates, uh, I would say, more or less quality YouTube content. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. It's just, for me, it's just so markety, like as, as a marketer, everything just screams like I'm trying too much with marketing. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's, it's just saying like, I need, I need the, the clickbait to get these views versus the, the content that people want, uh, or on the flip side, you know, he could just be maximizing the amount of content he's getting from the limited audience that's out there. That could be it too. And I'm rambling. So if I had to pick a side, I'm not a fan overall, all the net, I don't know. Uh, I'm actually going to unsubscribe. I might subscribe to him again in the future, but uh, for now, I'm just going to Google or YouTube question I have about YouTube and trust the most liked and the uh, trust the YouTube algorithm. Trust the YouTube algorithm. Ah, try number three. Trust the YouTube algorithm to tell me which video helps me with gaming the YouTube algorithm. There we go, Joey. That's how you tell a okay joke yeah it's it was a terrible joke let's not lie but he is now unsubscribed yes sorry roberto blake i'm still following on i'm still following you on twitter i don't know why i'm stuttering all of a sudden next guy on the list gosu used to go by the name hi i'm gosu uh, one of my favorite twitch streamers and still is one of my favorite youtube streamers I just haven't watched any of his videos in a long time. So occasionally, believe it or not, despite me being long-winded, I'm actually a pretty decent at mar decent marketer. And if I have time to prepare when I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. And I do pretty good at research, okay? Not going to lie. But when I'm not adulting and not being a professional, I used to watch all of his streams used to watch all of his YouTube videos back in the day. Uh, I don't know, that was like years ago. And looking back, his latest videos, he goes by numbers now. He's Gosu307. So the last video I've watched of him uh, that I actually watched watch, because I used to put him in the background, but the last video I've at least had him in the background on, I was scrolling down, scrolling down. Episode 207, over a year ago, almost a year and a half, two years ago. Whoa. Man, yeah, I have not. I have one long binging session I need to do. That's crazy. It's like almost 100 episodes. It is over 100 episodes. That's nuts. Dang. 
And then he still gets, he has 1.3 million views and he still gets about 400 to 500,000 views each day. So, I mean, he's, he's raking in his cash cow. He's just playing League of Legends, doing what he loves, although he does say he doesn't like playing at times, but whatever. Um, but Gosu, you're still subscribed. I, su I support you, man. I, just, I probably should watch one of your videos again, though. Next on the, li on the list, uh, Kudvin Cat. Technology Tutorials, Pragmatech.com is his banner. He talks about Angular tutorials, useful tools for developers. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a guy that I subscribe to because he talks more about coding. And this I added for because I thought about moving, transitioning a, my career into either software development or software engineering. I'm a really big numbers guy. I, I love numbers. Like, if you give me, I don't know, I mean, outside of like arithmetic or algebra and all that stuff, I just, I mean, outside of like knowing all that from memorization or knowing math techniques, like, I, I had I known about software engineering or just engineering in general, like the requirement for math and that, um, had I known that could have been a career viable option, I would have done that instead, that, uh, like in hindsight, but. You know, back then I did it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I was, what, 25, 28, 29? I don't know. When I figured, when I figured like, hey, maybe numbers and engineering could have been, like, at least the path I could have done outside of, or, like, if I, had a, if I had a job to do every day, that probably would have been it. I still might. You never know. But uh, anyway, skipping the rambling. That's the reason why I subscribe to him. Uh, I'm only going to keep him subscribed because I'm probably going to forget his name down the road, but I did enjoy his tutorials uh, just in general, and I don't want to lose, you know, lose that subscription. The next guy, Trinomortal. So Trinomortal, uh, he was actually probably one of my favorite YouTubers, still is uh, to this date. And I don't know why he stopped creating videos. I still subscribe to him in hopes that he creates a video. Uh, but all he does is, or did, was just create, like, just goofy, you know, anime nerd skits. And occasionally uh, created, created a video about League of Legends and his gameplay and his commentary. Um, his editing was pretty on point uh, for me personally. And half the time, towards the, towards the end, he just kept doing more like sponsored videos, which were pretty entertaining all in itself too. But it's been eight months since he subscribed. And I mean, YouTube will probably show him on top of the page once he subscribe, once he creates a video again, but I'm definitely not going to, uh, I'm not going to unsubscribe. So now we're heading towards, I think the bottom half of the list. And believe it or not, it's been like 25 minutes. Wow. Wowee. So maybe I'm going to take a one minute break just to say thanks again for listening. Let me know if this, you know, let me know again. Uh, hashtag Astroolish. Um, ask me a question. I'll be more than happy to answer or whatever I said earlier in the promo. I don't remember. I don't want to go back and look. Uh, I just want to keep the show running. And if you could tell, the amount of, I guess, professionalism on the show is pretty low for now. Um, but I'm pretty grateful that this headphone that I got actually has decent quality because I love listening to myself. So when I go back and listen, it sounds like heaven. I totally forgot. I can't tell if you guys can send sarcasm, but I was being sarcastic. Going down my list. Coin Mastery. That's the what I have in like the number 10 spot or in the second half, whatever. 123,000 subscribers looking at his recent videos. It seems like each video is thumbnail is progressively getting more interesting or more more visible with borders and a bit bigger text. And it seems to be working initially. But he stopped creating videos, I believe. Th yeah, three weeks ago. Then eight months ago prior. Hmm. 
I think this has a lot to do with like Bitcoin and whatnot, and I'm kind of out of that. So you are now unsubscribed. This pro tip, if you hear me ever talk about Bitcoin, it means do the opposite of what I say. Because when it comes to this pure speculation stuff, I tend to be a sucker. So use me as a key indicator to do the opposite. And then if you can give me like 5% or 10% of your profits back, then that'll be great. Like, like you can send it to me to my Bitcoin wallet. I don't know. Coin Mastery is now unsubscribed. Next one I have is Tom Ferry. I have no idea why I have him added. Tom Ferry, number one coach in real estate. I think he's related to Mike Ferry, who's also the number one coach in real estate. So that's pretty interesting. Well, I don't really see why I should be adding him. Because I am going to be doing this for a while. And I know who he is, so no, you're, uns you're unsubscribed. If I need something, I'll join your email list or something. Next one who I saved, Bite Size Philosophy. I think this is just a bunch of Jordan Peterson quotes. Man, I was all about him a long time ago. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually listened to him. I don't know if he's gone off the deep end or if he's still like in the news. Um, but he was big for a minute. This video though, no. You are now unsubscribed. Man, I'm chopping, chopping these ones. These are all like old uh, as I'm sorry to go down. Okay, let me do this next one, a CXO talk. So CX to, CXO talk, it almost looks like it's a, a TEDx talk kind of thing, but it's a conversions with the world's top innovators. Uh, the banner looks exactly like pretty much like a TEDx thing, like I'm an important speaker, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I know I'm, it sounds like I'm talking this down, but honestly, this is pretty important stuff in the world of business. Uh, they talk about like augmented reality and IoT, like procurement, procurement, procurement management consists, I can't even speak. Let me get through these next four videos. If I can say it clearly, I'll skip ahead and unsubscribe. Customer transformation with former CIO of Cisco, dot, dot, dot. Second one, board of directors in digital security, Oracle CIO, cognitive automation, supply chain management, Prexair CIO, create a culture of cybersecurity. And oh, look at me, I'm done saying all four of them. I can, I can announce it correctly, what do you know? Maybe I should try more on this podcast, or maybe not. Oh, no, I am. There's still music in the background, I hope, during editing. So most of this stuff is actually pretty interesting in their respective industries, I should say. Uh, like augmented reality, I've seen that firsthand, Pokemon Go, that stuff's pretty legit. Uh, but, you know, this stuff's more for, like, leaders and people who are just very immersed in the, into their industries and uh, you know it's, it's pretty cool stuff um, despite that despite how most of us would probably perceive it as boring um, I mean I could perceive it as boring too like I could do it right now like oh yeah CXO talk episodes yeah how about CX no talk oh yeah all right enough being stupid I'm still gonna unsubscribe I just I think I had a reason why I subscribed to them, but uh, I might eh, I might keep them updated. No, I'm, I'm going to get rid of them. Sorry, CXO Talk. You gone. Next on my list. A guy named Fuglet. This is, a, this is a very interesting lad because I've listened to him and watched him back in the pub, PUBG, or Player Underground days. He seems to be still doing doing well, um, but I don't really have an interest in watching gaming highlights outside of like Gosu. Um, if I happen to run into his videos in the future, I might subscribe to him again, but I don't really want him on my feed, so sorry, Fuglet. You're still a good guy. I'm still following you on Twitch, I guess. 
Entrepreneur. One second, folks. I'm going to drink some water. Let me know how it sounds. How's that for white noise? So entrepreneur. Switch it back to entrepreneur. <laughs> Sorry. Entrepreneur. So I guess this is just a series. So the Entrepreneur Network. Uh, I already know just this is probably worth keeping. Like, I do like to pride myself in trying to be more educated these days. And despite me being out of the loop in culture and sports because I'm so focused on my own world of anime and gaming and more nerdy stuff outside of that, I do need to be a professional at times. So definitely want to keep this. John Boys, or is that John Boas? John, if you are listening, okay, if someone is listening to Droolish and you know John Boys or John Boas, let me know how to pronounce his name because he's one of my favorite YouTubers. He's probably my favorite YouTuber, period. Um, he doesn't post any videos anymore on YouTube, but he's got several videos of what he still po what, what he still uh, creates uh, for uh, Sports Nation, I believe. And or SB Nation, I, I got to get that right. It's SB Nation, yes, SB Nation. But the two series he's pretty much known for these days is the uh, his chart party and pretty good. Love them. I mean, he still does stuff with SB Nation, but those are, but those are my two favorite ones. Uh, awesome guy. Still subscribe to him. We'll never unsubscribe. Next video I have on my list is the new Boston. So what is this? I don't recall this one. It's a, a 4200 video tutorials, graphic design, networking. Oh, this is one of those uh, coding channels. One for free. So if you're someone, this is going to be a side rant. I'll probably write a Medium article about this. Oh my god, I should just throw this in, by the way. Here's my first promo. Follow me on Medium medium.com and my name Joey Montano I don't know it's going to be on my drool, droolish Twitter or maybe it's even not I don't know my, my name's going to be somewhere go to the medium follow it despite I, despite me having boring stuff to talk about here I do want to try to write interesting things outside of this podcast so it's more about offbeat stuff that might have things to do with uh, business marketing in a sense of I don't know, like human psychology, I guess. Uh, well, that did not sound sexy at all. So I should keep talking, right? No, but uh, it's going to be just a unique blend of different articles. And I have a couple of things I'm trying to create in the meantime. I'm very excited about that. But done with the side promo. So if my production skills are as good as my hosting skills, I... We are now coming back from a break. That's called being sarcastic. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Next up on my list. Oh yeah, the man himself, jo Jordan B. Peterson. So it's been ages since I've seen his videos. His videos actually, I, I mean, I liked, I liked his videos and kind of just having a good level head about how to deal with life and how to push through things and getting into a positive mindset uh you know and he also talks about i guess other things i'm looking at like a uh, biblical series stories whatever biblical stories genesis the psychology significance behind it as well uh, that stuff uh, i'm less interested in that stuff personally at the moment maybe down the road i'll dive into it if i have a you know, if I'm, if I'm a curious Kathy, I guess I will, but, um, but I only, I only subscribed to him because I thought I'd be, I don't know, professor has political correctness. Eh, I still want to keep him around. Actually, you know, I, I was going to unsubscribe, but nah, he's, I, I'm going to keep him around. Uh, I feel like he does provide value and entertainment and, you know, I could see myself circling back to, to this, unlike the other channels that I feel like aren't 
I don't know. Aren't that. Uh, here's another channel. Uh, buddy of mine has his own podcast. Uh, now, quick do a shout out. It's called uh, Not Your Average Nerds. And also known as Nyan, N Y A N. Um, kind of sad now because now that I hop onto his YouTube channel, even though he's got 250 subscribers and like 12,000 Facebook fans, he's only got nine videos or 11 videos. It's like stream podcast. Weird. They would be pretty popular right now if they start putting all their YouTube stuff or their stuff on YouTube, or at least the audio versions of it. Huh. Well, uh, well, Juan, well, you need to talk. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You're still subscribed because I love you, Juan, but like, come on. If you weren't my friend, shame. So we're down to these last two, and I don't think I've ever actually seen these guys ever, but I have them subscribed. So a guy named Derek Kane. Apparently he had a series of videos um, over the last four years, between four years and three years ago, that talked about data science. Music building capabilities, part two, working with R&R &R Studio, going through decision trees. I think this was like a like a big tutorial series on like data science, and I was all about data science. And again, I mentioned numbers, and I mentioned software engineering, uh, data science. Actually, if you're interested in learning more about it, well, I'll tell you a little bit more, because um, it's maybe like one percent of you actually cares about it. So, data science is just having the ability to like learn no numbers, like predict. I don't want to say predict like the future with machine learning, but like you're solving business problems with analytics and you're using for like predictive science to more or less, like I said, predict the future. Um, but it requires like a big series sets of like knowledge in an industry or the ability to at least communicate with people or to understand like how business works. So it's like, it's like a twofold thing. Like, you need to know business and then you need to know the numbers to solve the business. So um, it's a very unique, unique field for someone that doesn't have a degree. Uh, but I digress. Uh, I'm keeping him subscribed because I'm very surprised. I, I totally forgot about him. Yeah, so that's that's a, that's a great subscribe by myself. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Joey. Good job. So the last one. I have this Lane Medical Library, which is very weird because it literally says Lane Medical Library, which means it's medical, medical. Everything should be with medicine, right? So I see MetLab, I see using R for programming. So this is, not, despite being medical, it's actually it's one, of, one of those general things where they talk about like data science as well, because uh, I believe this is this was what I remember. Lane Medical Library is like a good way to understand the, the basics of like learning R and like all that stuff, like coding um, for data science or the primary languages for data science. And Derek Kane was more like a really good thorough analysis of like showing examples and providing real world. Yeah, real world examples and practical knowledge. All right. I know it sounds corny, but I'm actually getting geeked out looking at these videos again. Well, that's it, guys. Like, I don't have any more YouTube channel subscriptions uh, that I have. It's a very limited list that I, I even cut to. So, you know, I'm actually kind of sad now. You know, buy, you know, could buy 10% of my subscription list. Yeah, well, I'm not losing any sleep over it because you guys should be sleeping right now. So I'm thinking I'm going to add some rain again towards the end because I'm starting to yawn and my dog is sleeping. So you should work on that too. Sometimes I find that if, you, if I just tell you to go to sleep, you might actually do it. That could be one reason why you're not going to sleep is that you're you're waiting for permission. Okay, just FYI, that was a joke. 
I want to make sure that's clear. That was a joke. Apparently, you have to establish yourself as a jokester before people get that you make jokes. Otherwise, they look at you like you're kind of weird, like, who is this Looney Tune? Which, I am a Looney Tune in my own right. Like, trust me, I'm pretty weird. Like, not like strange weird, but like, I don't know. You know. Okay, more in the minority of like things that I like that are popular, but okay. But I digress. Now, changing subjects, or should I say segments? I don't know. I'm still terrible at transitions. I thought it'd be cool to have a new segment. And let's be honest, all my segments are new because this is episode three. I don't even know if this is going to be on. I mean, this literally could just be the whole show. It's just me rambling about nothing for an hour or 90 minutes. Which is, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like this rambling shows? Do you guys like the effects? I mean, I'm trying to add soothing effects sometimes. Uh, I know I don't have an outro or an intro right now. But I like I'm telling you, episode eight. And I don't know why I'm saying episode eight. But if I keep hyping it up, maybe by the time I get to episode eight, everything will be done. Okay. Enough sidetracking. I still thought this segment, I just wanted to talk about uh, Twitter. Well, not so much Twitter, but I just thought it would be pretty cool just to go through some uh, hashtags and just see what people say. Because I honestly don't know why hashtags are popular. Uh, I don't know how they get popular, and I don't know why they change so frequently. Like, does like one main influencer give a hashtag and then everyone follows it? Or it could just be like a TV show and... There's a hashtag that says, you know, vote for the voice and people hashtag and then they count it with like with like social media tools. Uh, you know, that's a possibility. There's like a billion different ways and why I could why something could be trending. But I want to f- just go through some trends and see what's going on, like anything that interests me. And hopefully this should not interest you at all. Like, let me be clear. Let me know if this is too interesting, interesting or not interesting. And let me know if, we, if you've even gotten gone to sleep at this point because i just don't know like (laughs) so the first uh first trend i see is dark phoenix but uh, it's a pay tweet no one wants to do pay tweets so another uh, i'm going to skip that one and go this night by Jin. so there's apparently a description bts star Jin releases new solo music yeah i'm pretty sure uh, that does not interest in me you know at all Hashtag hash national cheese day. Fun fact, I don't like cheese, except on breadsticks and pizza. I am a weird guy, and you guys can tell me weird to my face. I already know I'm weird. That's, I'm assuming that's more positive than negative. So, thanks for the compliment. So, like, anyway, going through national cheese day, like, Twitter annoys me at times. Sometimes, okay, they have top latest people. So I want to look at the top tweets. One is what Andy Rector retweeted. What about cheese? Cheese is, uh, I don't want to see a gift. I want to see something that's non-gift related. And this is like one terrible segment when you're hoping to use, uh, when you're when you're hoping to describe like funny tweets, people are just posting meme reactions. Here's one. No, that's not it. It's another comic. It's a video. It's another video. It's someone posting video of cheese melting. More cheese. It's a p- picture of pizza. It's a picture of pe- a recipe. It's these are all terrible hash. Like this is a terrible hashtag. There's nothing interesting. Like these hashtags are stupid. Like there's not really like interesting people that are okay. I'm gonna do people and not top. Okay, I guess not. I'm going to do latest from National Cheese Day. Maybe there's actually something interesting. Like, at this point, like, like you have to be famous outside of Twitter to be famous in Twitter, if that makes sense. Like, there's no such thing as a Twitter star. Like, like you could be a star, I guess, on Twitter. Like, there could be a Twitter per- persona that could be famous. But, like, if you as a human want to be famous, you're probably going to have to, or, like, Twitter famous it's likely that you're going to have to actually do something outside of Twitter that that correlates with the fame you, you would receive on Twitter. So like be in a movie or be in a TV show or show up on the internet somewhere, create a YouTube video, create a terrible podcast called Droolish or whatever I'm calling it this week. 
Who knows? Going down the list of latest people that are using this National Cheese Day. Let's see who's using this. It's National Cheese Day. Where's at whatever with their weird obsession with cheese? That's not funny. It's not interesting. And what? And then let's see here. Norville should die. I'm about done with you, damn government cheese. Nah, I'm strictly a Swiss of mozzarella chic. Chic. Mozzarella chic. What? Nah, I'm strictly a Swiss or mozzarella chic. Yeah, I see that sounds just as ridiculous as I'm saying it. What is that even English? I, I'm just more convinced that I'm hilarious on Twitter and no one else is. The people that I follow are hilarious, and the people that are not being followed are not hilarious at all. I changed my mind. No one's funny on Twitter except me and like the same 5,000 people. Now I'm going to go through one more hashtag that I see on Twitter. It's coincidentally called hashtag uh, reasons you sorry hashtag reasons you stay on Twitter. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. So a lady goes by the name Art Margarita just says for the art about news and the news about art reasons you stay on Twitter. So that was a hashtag from someone that was verified on Twitter, verified with 26 followers. Uh, it was actually pretty popular apparently. Um, only got four likes, but something that was an hour ago. Man, like, I'm starting to realize, like, these hashtags are completely meaningless. It's like, just create your own hashtag for, like, comedic effect. Yeah, that's what I'm going to start doing. Hashtags for comedic effect. Let's see what else. Reasons you stay on Twitter. WhatsApp, down, down, down. Oh, it's a stupid reaction. Reasons you stay on Twitter. Because Twitter isn't repetitive like Facebook. It always gives you fresh news minute by the minute. Every day by the minute. Oops. That is true. You have the option to get recent news and whatnot. Let's see. Nisa Hendrix says, I stay on Twitter because Facebook is for kid and puppy post. What? That's not true at all. Facebook is not for kid and puppy post. Are you? I mean, I post on it for like either memes or I don't know. I try to stay for the negativity. Yeah, I guess. Instagram is for selfies and food pics. I do. S I like to use inspirational stuff for Instagram, but Twitter is where the world, or sorry, where we come to burn it all down to remind ourselves that we aren't alone in our fight to make this a better world. Hmm. It's kind of deep. I like that. I'm actually gonna like that. You know, I, I agree with that. To remind ourselves that we aren't alone in our fight to make this a better world. You know, what is, did it, who says this, like, be the change you want to be in the world? I guess that's, that's a very true statement. I mean, that's kind of the reason why I'm creating this podcast is, is to both help improve my hosting ability to do podcasting, to help you guys fall asleep, uh, and to, you know, pr produce other content outside of this that's more defined, well-rounded, you know, better thought out i'll take that back this is well thought out it's just not well articulated you know how hard it is to talk for like an hour straight luckily i decided just to talk about what i'm seeing in front of me versus using some pre-formatted stuff and the stuff that i used before was it wasn't even like pre-formats it was just like sections of stuff for me to work off of but it just never felt genuine like that's the problem like do i want to look at things that i've never done before and then have long silence or do I just want to keep talking as if I'm doing it right now and there's a consistent flow of my voice that helps you soothe and relax and just, I don't know, have like, I don't know, just feel like steam going over your head with my voice or whatever terrible, I don't know, simile or analogy I can come up with. I don't know. Terribleness aside, I do appreciate you guys sticking with this and... For those of you who are nervous or have an interest in going on like Twitter or Facebook or even trying to express yourself more to the public or just in a media, like just go for it. Like I know what I'm about these days and I, I'm not going to say I'm hundred percent in my own skin. As a matter of fact, I'm not. And that's a, that's a struggle, man. Like the older you get, the more you realize like 
people don't care, but in the same vein, like people do care, but they don't, but serves it. But those people that don't matter, those are the ones that qu they don't care weirdly enough, if that makes sense. I don't know, but I'm trying not to let that influence get to me. You know, you got to do what you got to do, what you want to do. And like full disclosure, you know, this is, despite this being episode three, I'm really just going to try to make this actually a pretty good episode, like with music and stuff. But like, it took me about two, three weeks for me to get this episode up and running after I wrote my two episodes because everything felt so forced and I just didn't want to. And I want to get into the mode of doing this when it feels authentic. Uh, in the same vein, I want this to become something that is a habit you know like i know there are going to be days where i might have to force myself just to talk uh, it might be a stream of consciousness a consciousness type of uh podcast and come to find out that maybe that's what you guys want i don't know but again i hope you guys have a wonderful night let me know what you guys think let me know what questions you have hashtag ask droolish or just speak to me directly. I should hopefully have a Twitter up by then. Uh, and just let's, you know, ask and I'll talk about it on the podcast. Uh, or I'll make, save it as a segment. Or maybe that could be the whole podcast. I don't know. Now maybe, I don't know. That, that might be a little bit too much. But let me know what you guys want to see more. Like, I don't mind trying new avenues. I don't mind talking more about myself to an extent. I don't mind talking more about a subject or getting my thoughts. I don't mind going and commentating over things. As long as I'm just talking and just speaking with how I would normally talk with people. That's probably the, probably the main goal that I want to get out of this. You know, it's tough when you're in front of a camera or when you're trying to put yourself out in the world uh, in a different medium because you don't know what, what's out there but you still see other people that are doing it. And they started out literally where we're at. And it might have been, you know, that first podcast might be terrible or the first, you know, email blast might have been horrible. I don't know. But in order for us to get better, like we need this feedback. We need to improve or, or at least we need to find the right people that understand what we're trying to do with, to, with with the world and what we're trying to accomplish and with that that's how we can get the right and positive criticism and whatnot and i'm not one to do motivational speeches it's pretty obvious because i'm doing one literally at like the 100 sorry one hour and two minute mark but i know the show's going to get better i know i'm going to get better i know with your help We'll get better in time, and hopefully it'll get better faster. Until then, guys, stay sleepy. I don't have a ending site tag line, but I will try to do better the next time, I guess. Sweet dreams.